Good morning. We are gathered here as a collective group of city and county leadership to show our support for Chief Aubrey Jenkins and also the hard working leadership of our fire department. We are here today as community leaders and of course community leaders throughout this city has genuinely, authentically supported Chief Aubrey Jenkins. The last few weeks have been very, very difficult in the life of this city for all of us, for all of us who have looked at this city in a very inclusive way, have looked at this city to say we continue to expand and grow ourselves. Many of us are here today not because of what you've heard or the rumors that have been dispelled, but you're here today to support this man who gives of himself, his time, his talents, and his gifts. We are asking everyone in this city of ours, and I think you know as well as I, and members of this council and members gathered around this DS today, that we are an inclusive community undergirded with the true sense of support. We understand that a full investigation is still underway. So why clamor in rumors and misinformation? If anything, let us be genuine as we embrace the totality of inclusiveness and embrace the whole notion of support is very, very necessary. Look at these five, these five men and women who runs to the fire and not away from it. But they are running towards that realization that support is needed. Please, let me reiterate this fact. Until a full investigation is done, we've heard, we've sensitized ourselves, and we are ready now to lend wholeheartedly our support. Actually, enough is enough until the full picture is drawn. I want to welcome now Chief Skip Holbrook, our Chief of Police. Um, thank you, Reverend McDowell. Um, this is um, difficult for me. I don't know that um, I've never experienced an attack on a, um, a decorated um, colleague um, like um, I witnessed just a couple days ago when um, I received a copy of this um, press release and the intentions of um, talking about a, just a tragedy that occurred in, in our city um, a few weeks ago. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that, about that letter um, or that release. You know, it was. It was authored by um, some people that I don't know, um, and I certainly know we're not present at that fire, um, and we're not part of that fire investigation um, that occurred after the fire. Um, and, and let's talk about the fire investigation and what Chief Jenkins did and how he led that. So the day of that fire, there was um, a co-response to the fire uh, based on an existing agreement between the Columbia Original Fire Department and a neighboring agency with IRMO. Um, firefighters arrived on the scene at um, 
about 4.13 in the afternoon, and, or excuse me, they were dispatched about 4.13, and they arrived just three minutes later and, and immediately began um, initiating suppression um, operations and rescue operations. And of course, we know that during um, the time that they were fighting that fire, um, several firemen were injured, and we had a fireman that was um, killed during the um, firefighting activity. A response by local, state, and federal law enforcement assets that have subject matter expertise in fire investigations. And um, I was on scene as well. And while the fire was still being worked, um, I had a conversation with Chief Jenkins and he expressed um, his desire that we had a, a very aggressive multi-agency approach to investigating the fire and the origin and cause of the fire. Um, and he immediately initiated that while that scene was still hot. Um, as I said, uh, upon that request, we had local, state, and federal authorities on the ground. And 24 hours later, we had an unprecedented um, request by the fire chief again um, to activate the national response team. And that was immediately done. And within 24 hours of that, we had national response team um, investigators on the ground. In my over 30 years in law enforcement, this was the most comprehensive response um, to an investigation that um, I've been a part of. We, um, we met multiple times every single day, uh, collectively as, as leadership, and we made decisions collectively. Uh, we always had consensus, and I saw everybody um, working as one team. They checked their egos at the door. Nobody had an agenda. The agenda was, um, as directed by our fire chief, get to the bottom of this. The reason law enforcement was involved was we wanted to make, we had a fire fatality, and we wanted to make sure that we um, either proved or eliminated any criminal intent. Within a few days of working the scene, the fire experts, the subject matter experts um, that were part of each of the participating agencies, they reached a conclusion, a preliminary conclusion of the origin and cause. As we briefed as leadership, um, it was decided collectively and unanimously that Chief Jenkins would in fact be the person that would talk about that at the appropriate time and that it certainly was his prerogative to release some preliminary findings, which he did. Um, and those preliminary findings were accurate and they remain accurate based on the information that's been um, determined by investigators to date. Um, that, that origin and cause was um, accidental at this point and it, it originated at a, at a stove. The national response team will, will issue a, a written final report um, within the next couple weeks. And, and again, as of today, nothing has changed in that origin and cause. The, the letter that I re wrote, that I read, it misrepresented um, what I just stated. Co-response to the fire, to fight the fire, based on agreements that have been in place for years, and immediate request by the fire chief for appropriate assets to do an investigation of the origin and cause of the fire. Now let me address leadership. That's my fire chief. He's, um, <clears throat> Everybody knows him. He's honest as the day is long. I've, I've, I've participated in executive staff meetings with him where he tirelessly ag advocates for the men and women of the Columbia Richmond Fire Department. He has served with distinction for decades with this agency, served this city. And um, it disgusts me 
that anybody would question that. With any critical incident, there's review. And from the very beginning, he has not shied away from that. We have the response, the criminal slash fire investigation, origin of cost, and then you have critical incident reviews. The sheriff and I um, took part in a very critical review of how we handled riots and civil unrest. And we acknowledged mistakes and we took corrective action so we wouldn't make those mistakes again. Um, that's what leaders do. If a mistake's made, you own it and you correct it and you, and you move on. Um, and you have the courage to ask for those reviews. And I know, you know, the fire department is renowned for incident command um, and doing after action reviews and learning, uh, learning if, if there's a way they can do something better. And uh, it is disingenuous for anybody to suggest that there's any other agenda other than doing what's right and seeking the truth. And it's insulting that anybody that has not been on that line, in that trench, on that ladder, that would suggest anything otherwise. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the city manager, Teresa Wilson, and um, what you just heard are the facts of the situation. The facts that have occurred ever since the tragic events that occurred that resulted in a line of duty death that we are all heartbroken about. But now isn't the time to point fingers, to find blame, to even give any credence, and I'm just gonna shoot it straight, to some rogue outside group who's running into town off the paid dues of some supposed organization that lends itself to come into town and prey on communities to misinform, first of all, as the chief said, never laid a foot to my knowledge or picked up a hose or anything else on the day of the incident, but yet come here and conflate issues and point blame. Now, that's about all the attention I'm gonna give to that. The chief has already given the facts of the investigation. The arrogance and disrespect the attempt to agitate community and misinform people is the reason why we're standing here, one of the reasons. But the overarching reason is to show support for a man who's given over 44 years to serve this community. And most recently, in a very long and hard fought budget process that happens every year this time, he and the command staff and members of the battalions that are standing with him today thought above and beyond to be creative to begin to further address some of the other issues that departments all over this country are facing, like short staffing, resources, facilities needs, and we did that. Members of city and county council expect me and the county administrator, who I know would be standing here with us too if he could, to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. They budgeted for and have allocated over an additional one and a half million dollars each to begin to address some of those needs from a staffing perspective to pay our firefighters more, over $10,000 more as a starting firefighter will be, has been approved in the proposed pay plan. A step pay plan that allows these firefighters who want to be career professionals 
to succeed and see how they can grow their careers and support their families over time if they choose to stay? These are the discussions that have been happening. These are the issues that the Fire Chief Jenkins and his team have been advocating for and have been quite successful. So to say, when I see some misinformed, disrespectful, arrogant press release come out on the very day that our city council, and I'm sure county council members as well, are doing the work, the real work, to make real change, was so very disappointing. So very disrespectful. And so very unnecessary to come into town when communities are at their most vulnerable during a line of duty death and everything that is involved with that. We don't fear, we welcome the investigative process. Let it continue. It's a process and whatever comes with it, we're here to address those things make any changes if there are any that need to be made. Nobody is shying away from that, but it's a process. And unfortunately, when such groups prey mm -hmm. on the very employees that we're trying to serve because the taxpayers expect certain service delivery and they expect accountability and they expect that I, as a manager, hold my employees accountable to do the things they're supposed to do. And when I decide that in the midst of all this there's confusion and I'm gonna address the confusion with employees, it's a shame that certain people decide to hide behind uh, social media platforms. I'm not on social media. So if you have something to say, Stand up and be about it and say it. And I'm speaking directly to these agitators. I'm speaking even to members in our own department who decide that they're gonna have these separate associations to supposedly address issues. Now I will say these associations, they are, you know, I, you know the fire culture has this. We're not a union state, but you know, even in South Carolina, there are these associations who work within the departments. But then, if you're going to do that, sit down and talk about things ahead of time. It's okay. We're not afraid to have conversations. But don't hide behind people and definitely don't get in my lane. Because we've coexisted really well over the last few years when you have worked as associations because you stayed out of the lane of governance, of budget, of staffing issues and the like. When we as professionals are trying to work through those things and get funding and, and be true to what our citizens are asking for, that's what's been happening up here with city and county council members. They've been doing the work. They've approved the budget. So when you decide to coincide and co-mingle this misinformation with that, otherwise I'm usually pretty behind the scenes and quiet. But when you do that, you're gonna hear from me, and they did hear from me this week about it. So anyone in the organization who is, is uncomfortable or, or feels some kind of way, so do I. And very pointedly, we will hold you accountable for your actions. Don't hide behind social media. It's not necessary. You got a problem, let's put it on the table and address it in the right way, but do not misinform this community, and most importantly, do not step on the legacy of your leader. 44 years and counting, we're just up here to give the facts. Sheriff Lott says it all the time when he delivers a press conference. If you want the facts of things, then that's what we're giving you, the truth. We're standing in our truth. And whatever else comes with it, 
let the chips fall where they may. Nobody's scared of that because we've been handling things just according to the plan, following the protocols and the processes, and that's not going to change. I don't care who swoops into town, and they can swoop right back out. You know, these three gentlemen, Chief Holbrook, Chief Jenkins, Sheriff Lott, I call them the three musketeers all the time. Sometimes they let me be their fourth. I trust them with my life, and I trust them with the lives of the team members that they lead, period, end of story. We appreciate the support being given to Chief Jenkins. He deserves it. He deserves it. A life well lived, a public servant who's doing his best. So don't get in my way about it. Thanks. Enough is enough. We have law enforcement, Sheriff Lott, Chief Holbrook. We have communities around this city that have called in to say we support Chief Jenkins. We have school board commissioners, Aaron Bishop, our own members of city council, members of county council that are here, and we also, also have with us Chairman Overture Walker. Isn't it great? This is not just a one man or one woman. This is an inclusive fellowship who understands what support and supporting this chief is all about. We have presidents here with us today, so we're not by ourselves. And the worst thing that can happen in a city is for persons to share misinformation. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for being a vital part of this community. And thank you, Chief Jenkins, for being who you are and who you are. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.